Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I dipped into the Hummingbird palette from Udenzai. This is now my second look using an Udenzai palette and you'll have to watch the video to see what I think of it, but I had a lot of fun with this beautiful color story. If you'd like to see how I did this using this, then stick around and I will show you. And if you haven't been here before, hello and welcome. My name is Rachel. I'm just a homeschooling stay-at-home mom who loves to play with colorful eyeshadow. So if you'd like to see colorful tutorials and other content like that on your timeline, then please consider liking and subscribing. Comment below with things that you might like to see and don't forget that you can follow me on Instagram at Shimmers and Silver. Now let's dig into it. All right, I'm diving right in with my Icing Primer in White Frosting. This is my very first tutorial of the new year, so Happy New Year and good morning. It's about six in the morning on January 1st. Um, yes, I was up past midnight. It was up actually up till about one. But my sister is coming into town, and I wanted to get one more tutorial done, done and uploaded before she arrives. I haven't seen her in about two years, and I just want to make sure that all of my attention can be given to her and I'm not distracted. Okay, my plan today, I'm so excited about this palette, this palette's so pretty, but I was a little bit overwhelmed by it because there are so many colors. Colors can be tricky. Um, and so I had to really sit and think about what I wanted to do. What I'm going to do is inner crease, outer crease, and outer corner. And then I'm going to dip into this shade and probably this shade, I think. Let's just go for it and see how it turns out. First, I am taking a detail crease brush from e.l.f. and I'm dipping into the pink matte called Hibiscus. That's this one here. And I'm gonna place that, I'm gonna place that through my entire crease. Starting out here, I did swatch this palette because part of my problem with trying to decide what to do and you know, plan looks was that I wanted to ha I know that there are sometimes different formulas in the Oud Inside palettes, and I wanted to know for sure what a shadow would look like on the skin. So I swatched all of them. So this is really pigmented. I'm creating the wing that I like, the cat eye shape in the outer corner. And I'll blend that in a minute, but I'm just gonna go back in and do it the same thing to the other side because I have committed. My ultimate decision in what to do with this palette today was based on which shimmer was most loudly calling my name. They are all so beautiful and they were all calling my name. But I wanted to use the one that was really speaking to me this morning. And that's this like orangey gold. I've done several blue and purple looks lately. I've done um, several green looks lately and I wanted to do something that was a different color scheme. So I chose like pink, gold, I don't know. I think each time I look at the palette, I, I forget what I had decided and have to decide again, because <laughs> it's so pretty. I'm taking a medium but slightly pinched blending brush and I'm just gonna soften out these edges. Because right now I'm looking a little bit crazy. I have to admit that I'm a little bit nervous I hope that I love the way this turns out. Because with, with a palette like this that is all bright colors with no neutrals, I honestly get a little bit nervous. And I usually like to follow someone else's tutorial the first one or two times that I use the palette, just so that I can get comfortable with those colors. And then I get a little more confident as far as choosing them myself, but I didn't do that this time. There are not a ton of tutorials for this palette. And I just, mm, just a little scared that it's gonna look insane. Because I don't consider that I'm the very best at choosing colors, making them work together. Sometimes I choose the wrong undertones. It's just not my strength. So we'll see. Okay, now I'm dipping into the shade Star Apple. This is that, it's actually a deep purple which you may or may not be able to tell 
in photos of the palette, but it's deep purple. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm taking a large pencil brush and I'm dipping into Star Apple. And I'm placing that on my, I'm gonna place that on my outer corners. Just bringing that onto the bottom of my brow bone, stamping the color in place. I'm not really carrying it through my crease. I'm just putting it in this outer area. And then going back into that blending brush and working them together. So when I'm doing this blending, I'm not dragging back and forth in windshield wiper motions. I'm, I'm learning as I do more and not more eyeshadow that different brands blend better with different techniques. So. Beauty Bay and I think Uden's Eye seem to blend better if you just press and shift, like press into your skin and then just gently go blend out in whatever direction you want. But ColourPop and BH Cosmetics are both fine if you like wipe back and forth. So it's just an interesting thing. Like I think with Uden's Eye, it seems to work better for blending if, especially if I'm blending a dark color, that I, I just sort of press the pigment into my skin and then push it off in short little strokes. Okay, maybe that looks slightly less crazy. I'm trusting the process here. I know the process. I've done eyeshadow consistently enough for long enough that I know my process. I just have to trust it. Also, this formula is definitely buildable, so it's okay if you dip in lightly and then blend it out and then dip in a little more and blend it out again, instead of going in really heavy-handed the first time and then taking ages to just blend out all the pigment that you've placed down. You can go in a little bit at a time and add to it. Okay, I think that's actually looking really pretty. Now I'm taking a flat shader brush and I'm dipping into the shade Swallowtail, which is this one right here. I'm gonna go and dry first to see how it performs because I don't remember. So it's just dry on my brush and I'm gonna place that on my lid. Starting in the inner corner and working out to meet that purple. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go right up to the purple because I, I think I wanna place down another shimmer. What I'm doing here is I'm kind of faux cutting my crease with the shimmer. This is performing really beautifully. If you go in too heavy, you're gonna get some fallout. So you may want to spray your shimmer. I usually spray my shimmers, but I'm running low on setting spray. So because this is working really well dry, I'm not gonna bother today. But oh, this is beautiful. Oh, it's so sunsetty. These two, like the pink and the shimmer together, are so sunsetty. It looks like a, it looks like a um no, it looks like a tequila sunrise. They're sunrisey. Okay, so I'm carrying that I'm faux cutting my crease, carrying that almost to meet the purple. This is beautiful. And then with the same brush, same technique, I'm dipping into hummingbird, the dark purple shimmer. And I'm going to use that to transition this shimmer into that dark purple. So I'm placing it right over the seam line of those two colors. Because shimmer likes to blend with other shimmer, so if you're trying to blend a shimmer into a matte, it's easiest if you can find a shimmer that is a similar tone as the matte, and then use that to blend the shimmer into the matte. It just, you don't no notice the transition as much when you're blending the same formula. Now I don't want this purple shimmer to overwhelm that beautiful gold orangey shimmer, so I'm placing it down, but then I'm I, I'm really just using the purple shimmer. I don't want that to be a focal point. I want that to just be a transitional tone. So once the purple is placed down, I think on this side I put it, I brought it too far. Once the purple is placed down, I'm going back into Swallowtail, which is the gold, orange gold shimmer and I'm placing more of that and carrying it through to where I want it to be. Also, the purple is a much darker tone, so the purple can easily overwhelm the lighter, the lighter color. 
and so I'm dragging the lighter color into the dark to work on that blend instead of placing the dark on top of the light because then I'll just drown it out. I may, oh man. I think Udenzai might be my new favorite brand. I mean, they, they win on packaging, hands down. I, I really like ColourPop's cardboard packaging, but Udenzai takes packaging to a new level. <laughs> And then the formulas, like it's, they're buildable, they're pigmented, the shimmers are outstanding. They're so interesting, they work really well. There's, considering colors in this, in these palettes, the second Udin's Eye palette I've used now, I have gotten basically no fallout on my face. There's sometimes a little bit of kick up in the pan, especially for with the darker tones. But there's basically no fallout on the face. It's so impressive. I think Udin's Eye might be, might be my new favorite brand. Amazing. This is pretty. I'm liking this. I legitimately still have pillow lines. <laughs> I woke up and I was like, I'm so sleepy. I'm so drowsy. I really want to do a tutorial. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put on some concealer under my eyes just to brighten it up a little bit and then I'll be back to do the under eye colors. All right, I'm ready to do my under eyes and I have decided to use these two colors here, the lime green here and then this beautiful blue. So I've got a flat angled brush. I'm gonna put the lime green on the inner corner because it works so nicely with pink and then I'll put the blue out here because it works so nicely with purple. So I'm dipping into the green first and again, these shimmers have been performing so well and I'm low on setting spray, I'm not gonna bother spraying them. So I'm dipping into the green shimmer and I'm gonna place that on my inner corner lower lash line. Look at that. That is so gorgeous. I'm going to bring that color about halfway. I just want to put this color all over my eyelid. <laughs> These colors are amazing. All of them. Oh my word. Udin's Eye would technically be my first indie brand. And I have, I have heard since coming on the eyeshadow scene, which has been about 10 months, I have heard that, sorry, now I'm dipping into the blue. Uh, the green is called Feathers and the blue is called Tropics. So I'm dipping into the blue and starting my outer lower lash line and bringing it out, to, bringing it in to meet the green. Anyway, I have heard that there have been a lot of indie brands coming on the scene who are really giving the mainstream brands a run for their money, particularly with shimmers and duochromes. I'll be honest with you, I know it's not trendy, but I don't love duochromes. I, I just, I understand they're cool, they are cool, but they don't excite me very much. I find that duochromes can be difficult to work with because you don't know what color you're getting. Like, if you have more of a brown eyeshadow look and you put on a duochrome that has brown and green to it, yes, green works well with brown, but I don't know, it, it, maybe that color of green doesn't work with the rest of the eye look, and then you've got, uh, I don't know. I, I'm not really on the duochrome trend. I have heard indie brands are definitely getting noticed for their for their shimmers and their duochromes or multi-chromes. I'm gonna take that blue and because I have a nice crisp angled brush, I'm just gonna bring it out to echo this wing area. Kind of like doing a reverse cat eye. And now I'm taking two eyeliners. The green is called A Glow and it is from ColourPop's Lush Life collection. And then the blue is called Big Splash and it might be from the Cabana Club collection, ColourPop, but I'm not sure. And I'm going to I'm gonna echo what I did on the lower lash line. So the green water line goes above the green shimmer. And the blue water line goes above the blue shimmer. Okay, so I don't think it turned out too crazy. I think it's pretty. 
I'm gonna finish up with some black eyeliner and mascara and then I'll be back. All right, I'm back and here is the finished look. I ended up taking this light blue shade right here and I put that as an inner corner highlight shade and that is the only other thing that I added off camera besides some black eyeliner but there's no wing and some black mascara and a little bit of setting powder and I mean setting spray. Anyway, this palette is so gorgeous. I am blown away by the shadows and the pigments and the textures and it's just so gorgeous. I love it so much. I'm gonna have lots of fun with this and I look forward to challenging myself to play with other color combinations because again there are no neutrals in here and generally I I consistently I complain if a palette has too many neutrals. Well this palette doesn't have any neutrals and so it's forcing me to branch out and do things which are a little bit more scary but have much more interesting results. So thank you for being with me today. I hope this was a fun little slice of your day and I look forward to making more tutorials for you. Remember, my sister is coming to town to visit for a few weeks, so my YouTube channel might be a little slow, um, but once she heads back home, I will be all over the eyeshadow tutorials again because it's so much fun to make these. Anyway, until we see each other again, have a wonderful day. Bye. And I've already forgotten. What, what did I want to do? Oh, I meant to do blues and purple. That's so boring.